Hello, great sins. Hello. How's it, guys? How's it going? All right. So, last lesson we did some epithelium. So, we covered all the surfaces. Uh, see what it did there? Um, and we, you really need to know those um, epitheliums quite well, um, especially how to identify them. And I actually found some other really cool pictures. So by the time we get back to school, I'll show you those and we can draw those and have a better understanding of what each one of them do and how they work and how they function. Okay, so now we're going to start connective tissue. Um, now, connective tissue is it literally like it does what it says in its name. It connects different parts of the body together. So it either can connect two organs together um, and I literally mean physically or via a liquid so now there are different types of um, connective tissue those are the liquid ones the semi-solid ones and the solid ones okay and you'll be quite interested to actually find out what different connective tissues there are so they consist of relatively few cells which are separated from each other so the actual um, connective tissue itself looks like this. So what it does is it has a very few couple of cells and those cells produce a substance of some sort, okay? And that substance that it produces is what we then recognize as the actual tissue itself. So they have these living cells and they're responsible for, so for secreting large amount of intercellular ground substance. Okay, I'm probably going to put that in your weekly quiz. So what is secreted from these living cells that are very widely separated? Matrix, okay, or intercellular ground substance. I don't expect you to learn intercellular ground substance, but I do expect you to know the word matrix. The matrix is non-living. So think of your nails, all right? So you have living cells which sit at the base of your nail bed and it secretes keratin, which is non-living. All right, so same idea. You have living cells that are secreting a non-living matrix. This matrix may be solid, semi-solid, or liquid. Now, the next part is also extremely expen uh, expensive, interesting, and important. They are embedded in matrix and um, are a variety of supporting and connecting fibers. All right, so now in each and every single one of these um, connective tissues that we are going to do, there has to be fibers. These fibers cause these structures to be stronger and or they have a very specific function, okay? So for instance, the um, solid one we're going to be looking at is, oh, actually we'll get to the next slide, um, but please note that there are elastic fibers and collagen fibers. You need to remember collagen fibers. You are going to be looking at the amount of collagen in each and every single one of these cartilages to be able to identify what cartilage it is, either hyaline white fiber cartilage or yellow elastic cartilage, okay? So you need to remember that there's collagen fibers. So again, they are living cells, and each one of these tissues has a very specific name for their living cells. Um, these living cells produce a non-living matrix, so they secrete it, and then it has to have collagen fibers. Has to. If it doesn't have it, it's not a connective tissue. So these are the three main ones that we're going to be looking at. Cartilage on the far left-hand side over there. We're going to be looking at blood in the middle, and we're going to look at bone on the far right-hand side. So bone is the solid cartilage is the semi-solid and we have bone which is completely liquid well not completely like <clears throat> you know the substances inside of it um you know the red blood cells white blood cells all those other bits and pieces you know they aren't they are solid themselves but what they're sitting inside of is liquid cartilage um i will that's what this whole lesson is about cartilage specifically so let's have a look go a bit deeper so it's usually found in close association with bone you often find it directly over bone okay it is there as a like because i mean if you've ever felt cartilage and i want you to think about when you've ever um touched um well you've been eating chicken and you've been eating a chicken um leg um and specifically right at the top there's a weird chewy bit now very few people enjoy this but there are quite a couple of people who do enjoy this it actually is like somewhat of a cultural thing as well like i know afrikaans people who like hunt for your cartilage um and then also like black people that love cartilage as well i don't know i just i don't particularly like the taste of cartilage um it freaks me out just a little bit but i mean it is what it is all right so it's tough semi-transparent elastic and flexible all right you want it to be elastic and flexible so that it, it can also act as a shock absorber so if i push two bones together which have cartilage on top of each other they're not 
going to break. They're just going to bend ever so slightly and then push back and remain in its shape, okay? Um, the fact that it's semi-transparent has absolutely nothing to do with this, but the tough part is extremely important. And what makes it tough? The, cart the, oh, the cartilage, <laughs> the collagen. Okay, so the, ma the matrix or ground substance of cartilage consists mainly of chondroitin. So all that you need to learn is chondroitin is the matrix of cartilage. Chondroitin is the matrix of cartilage. And what are the living cells that produce chondroitin? Chondrocytes. So now you're realizing the word chondro means of cartilage, okay? So chondro, cartilage, sites mean cells. They are literally directly translated into cartilage cells, okay? So the chondrocytes produce the chondroitin, which makes up the cartilage, okay? So the chondrocytes lie scattered in the matrix, and I'll show you how in a bit. And you can imagine it's quite dangerous as well, because if you just got random cells floating in the semi-solid, eventually the cells are going to get damaged themselves. So what I want you to do is please draw this table, okay? And then you are going to fill this table in as we're going along. I've included the epithelium part over there. So you need to um, copy this and then fill in the structure. So what it looks like, is there any main part about it? So for instance, you might want to include the amount of collagen. Um, for squamous, you would like to say it's squashed. Cuboidal, it's cube-shaped. Columnar, it's column-shaped. Ciliated, columnar, it has cilia on top of the column shape. Glandular, it has the goblet cells. And then the function and the location. And I've included this in all my videos as well. Now we're going to look at connective tissue, specifically hyaline, white fiber cartilage, yellow elastic, blood, and bone. <clears throat> All right, so let's have a look at hyaline cartilage. So hyaline cartilage first, let's talk about the structure, um, is a pearlish blue color, and it has fine collagen fibers interspersed in the matrix of the cartilage, okay? So again, it is Polish blue, it has fine collagen fibers, and they are not many of the collagen fibers, okay? It's found in the trachea. What's your trachea? It's a thing that you produce your voice out of. Your larynx, your tip of your nose, in the connection between the ribs and the breastbone, also known as your sternum. So where your ribs come from your back, come all the way around and join this middle part over here that makes you speak like this when you hit it. That bit, to join those two together, we put some cartilage in. And the end of bones where they form joints. And we'll be drawing a joint um, and you need to be able to redraw that for any exam. So what are the functions? Um, it reduces friction at joints, so it's a sliding area. Um, and if you've ever felt cartilage, you can actually rub your fingers over it and there's almost no friction between it. You actually can't directly hold it. It will pop out of your fingers. Um, there's also a whole bunch of cartilage in a chicken as well. So I recommend like, when you're eating chicken, maybe hopefully this week or next week, um, you know, try and find some cartilage and like bite through it, um, taste it. I don't know, some people like it, some people don't. Um, but they're also used for movement and support okay so in your so the c-shaped rings in windpipes assist uh, for keeping the tubes open so you can imagine that if your windpipes closed for some reason your muscles wouldn't be strong enough to force those air pipes back open so there's a a, a ring but it's not a closed ring it's just a c-shaped ring um and that actually sits along the entire um trachea of your windpipes um, and also inside of the lungs, they have O-shaped rings. And this is allowing you to like, keep those windpipes open. And also remember, you have a C-shape. You don't want a full circle because if something gets lodged in your windpipe or your trachea, um, you want to be able to push something back out. Whereas if you had, um, you, let's say you got something stuck inside of your windpipe um, and it would actually crack the cartilage. And if you crack the cartilage, you could actually cause more damage by puncturing other parts of the system. So it's important to have a C-shape so that it's small and then it can actually open and close as it feels fit.
So this is what it looks like. This is cartilage uh, magnified 4,000, oh, sorry, 400 times. You can see that it has a matrix which is smooth um, and there are very little fibers. You can't really see them. We have the chondrocytes and now there is a new word, the lacunae or lacuna. It depends how fantastic you feel like being. So let's have a look at this. I please want you to draw that top left hand corner version and um, that top left hand corner is the diagram of how to identify hyaline cartilage. What I recommend you do is you put one or two squiggly lines in between um, those white islands um, and label them collagen. Okay. So the bottom right hand corner um, in the purple and pink and white and whatever else it is, I've put maybe like a way to explain it. So we have the chondrocytes, which is the living cells. We have the nuclei inside of those chondrocytes. And then we have something called lacuna. So the lacuna are the dark purple rings around the cells. So they are fluid filled uh, structures that allow for the living cells of the matrix to live in. Say it again. I probably can't remember how to do it properly. Um, there are fluid spilled, filled spaces in between the matrix to allow for the living cells to not get damaged. OK, so these lacuna are full of water um, or like fluid specifically so that you can allow for diffusion and osmosis, as well as it acts as a shock absorber so that the living cells don't die. Um, a lot of the time we can replenish our cartilage, but not all the time unfortunately okay so I want you to draw and I want you to label I've included the labels then we have a hyaline cartilage um, in the joint bone so I don't expect you to draw this version I've got a slightly easier version next so there you can see bone coming from the top of the leg um, and bone coming from the bottom of the leg and then um, it is attached by a ligament okay so ligament on the far right hand side is a structure that joins <clears throat> bone to bone whereas a tendon or tendon joins bone to muscle already so then you got the ligament which is joining the bone to bone but you can see how coarse or how granulated the bones are if they had to rub up against each other you would wear your bones away before the age of 25 okay it's as simple as that especially if you are a very active person so what the body does is it goes and puts cartilage on you can see that those white caps on top of the top and bottom of these um, bones and um, that cartilage is specifically hyaline cartilage now it doesn't just stop there because if you kept on banging your cartilage together eventually um, it would um, you know also wear away so what you're going to do is you're going to add synovial fluid in between that area over there called the synovium Okay, and that synovium and the synovial fluid is going to act as a barrier stopping or trying to stop the two different bones with cartilage on from touching each other. So now you have that dark red color over there, which is called the synovium. And then you have the light pink just outside between the ligament and the synovium. And that is known as the muscle that is also um, inside over there that allows the movement of the ligament to actually um, function. Okay. So I want you to draw this, please. So we have bone, we have bone, um, two bone at the top and bone at the bottom. We have art articular cartilage. Please change it to hyaline cartilage. We have the fibrous capsule, which is also known as the um, ligament on the outside. And then we have the bone cavity filled with synovial fluid or the synovium with synovial fluid inside. And then finally, we have the ligaments on the outside. Now, please remember that there's also ligaments inside of the synovial fluid as well. Um, and if you've ever heard of the cruciatus ligament or the ACL, if you snap that, there's a very high chance that you will not um, be able to do a lot of activity um, or strenuous activity because it will continue breaking. But if given enough time and it is like um, operated on correctly, um, it will actually survive. Okay, so please, you need to be able to draw this and use the labels from the previous slide. Then we have white fiber cartilage, which is an extremely tough tissue. And it's extremely tough because the structure is <laughs> um, the chondrocytes with bundles of collagen all over the place. Like very, very, there's tons and tons and tons and tons of cartilage, uh, collagen all between the lacuna and the chondrocytes. Okay, where they found as discs between the vertebrae and between the pubic bones, which means that they can actually hold. Remember that your your um, vertebral column itself is actually holding up 
the entire um, spinal column and there is a lot of pressure because it's holding the weight everything from your head your shoulders and your entire abdomen it's actually pulling down on it so when we do the skeleton next year i'll show you why this is more important but um, it's allowing it to act as a shock absorber um, the functions there are shock absorbers as i said earlier while walking or running and they provide sturdiness without impeding bone movement so to impede something means to stop it from working properly. So it like allows you to be a rigid individual, um, but you can also move quite a lot. Alrighty, so let's have a look at white fiber cartilage over there. I want you to draw that bit on the right hand side. Um, you can see that the cells of the cartilage or the chondrocytes inside of the lacuna, and then it has a very fibrous matrix. So it has chondroitin, but the chondroitin is chock a block full of collagen itself. Then we have elastic cartilage or yellow elastic cartilage, as I like to mention it. Its structure is that it has bands of yellow fibers and collagen. So the yellow fibers allow for an extreme amount of flexibility, more so than hyaline and white fiber cartilage. Remember, you don't want white fiber cartilage to move a lot. You want it to act as a, um, <clears throat> a just shock absorber. Hyaline, you want it to act as just a structural component. It must just hold things together, whereas yellow elastic fiber must be able to bend and a lot of bending. So in addition to um, collagenous fibers, matrix of the elastic also contain a network of branched yellow elastic fibers. And they're found in the lobe of the ear, the epiglottis, which is that bit on top of your um, uh, trachea, which stops anything like while you're swallowing water or liquid to go down it, and parts of the larynx. Okay, its um, function is to maintain shape and support okay and it's also like like that's the reason why your ear can bend so much and bounce back um please also note that you can crack a cartilage so even though it is semi-solid if you put enough pressure on it to a, um, in a very short space of time like using a gun to shoot in an, an earring at the top of the ear you can actually crack the cartilage and then it's done for it cannot um grow back <clears throat> so here's what uh, yellow elastic cartilage looks like um, I want you to draw that on the right hand side there's um, elastic fibers and then please label some of them um, collagen and then you have your chondrocytes inside of your fluids fold spaces called the lacuna and it is surrounded by the chondroitin which has tons of elastic fibers and collagen all right so that is cartilage for you uh, if you have any questions whatsapp me